Hello YouTubers and welcome to another Generation Behind Hi-Fi video. If you saw my review video on the JBL Studio 530 bookshelf speakers, then you probably already know that I think these are the best speakers that you can buy for under $350. These bookshelf speakers offer tremendous value for money. So that got me thinking, if JBL's bookshelf speakers are this good, what about their subwoofers? So I decided to order one of these cheap $189 10-inch subwoofers from JBL so we could see how it's constructed and to also see how it will sound. So sit back, relax, and let's find out what $189 will get you from JBL. First off, I just want to say this is by far the heaviest $200 subwoofer that I have ever lifted. This thing weighs in just a tad over 50 pounds. I can't wait to get this driver out so I can see how thick the front baffle is. Judging by the weight, I'm guessing JBL used some pretty decent construction techniques to build this thing. The subwoofer driver is held in by 8 Allen head screws. I thought for sure at this price point, they'd be using regular old Phillips head screws, but nope. So far I'm impressed by the weight and hardware. Holy cow, that's incredible. Look at this driver that I pulled out of this $189 subwoofer. This subwoofer has got to be a loss leader for JBL. I don't see how they can make money on these things by offering them for such little money. If anyone is curious what a driver normally looks like out of a $200 subwoofer, then check out my look inside video on the Klipsch R10SW. Spoiler alert, it doesn't look anything like this JBL driver. It's incredible that JBL can offer a driver like this for such an affordable subwoofer. The specs on this driver include an aluminum die cast basket. Yep, you heard that right, die cast basket, not stamped steel. Large ferrite magnet, rubber surround, vented pole piece, and some pretty impressive excursion capabilities. Now I'm curious how much this subwoofer driver weighs. The last subwoofer driver that I pulled out of a $200 subwoofer weighed less than six pounds. Impressive, 13 and a half pounds. Well over twice the weight of the last $200 subwoofer driver that I pulled. The amplifier is mounted on the rear cabinet wall with 10 Phillips head screws. JBO claims this amplifier is good for 300 watts of RMS power and 550 watts of peak power. Unfortunately, JBL has enclosed all the components to the amplifier in its own plastic housing so I won't be able to take a look at the components that were used to build the amplifier with. If I had to guess, there's probably a lot of cost cutting done with the amplifier section of this subwoofer. The reason I say this is when I do a quick search on Google for amplifier failures for this particular model, there seems to be quite a few posts out there from owners who have had amp failures within the first two or three years of ownership. So if you do end up buying one of these, it might be wise to get the extended warranty. This amplifier has all of the typical connections you would find on most modern subwoofers. There is an on-off switch, gain control, phase control, variable crossover knob that is adjustable from 50 to 150 Hz, and stereo plus LFE RCA inputs. If you want to use this subwoofer for LFE only, then there is a switch you have to enable to do so. So far I've had no problems with my amplifier, however on the unit that I received, the rotary knob to adjust the crossover is pretty stiff and somewhat hard to move. I contacted JBL support about my crossover knob and they did offer to exchange the subwoofer, but I didn't want to go through the hassle of swapping it out. Alright guys, here's the JBL sub, completely disassembled. Now you gotta remember, I only paid $200 for this subwoofer, but this subwoofer is constructed like one that costs $500. Look at this. Look at the internal bracing. Look at all the damping inside. The polyfill. Front baffle here is one inch thick. One inch thick. That's insane for a $200 sub. Listen to how quiet this thing is. This cabinet just by itself is worth 200 bucks. I mean, it is just a quiet cabinet, well made. Back part where the amplifier mounts, 
three quarters of an inch thick. That wall right there. I mean, even the finish on it is really nice. Doesn't look cheap. Obviously, it's a vinyl wrap, but still, it's a high quality vinyl wrap. That is, if my camera will focus, there it goes. And then I love these uh, front pieces right here on the side, these side pieces they put right on the front. I mean, they really look good. But for $200, it's remarkable, absolutely remarkable. No doubt, this is by far the best bang for the buck I have ever seen in this hobby. I can't think of another subwoofer at $200 that sounds this good. Um, I bought a Klipsch R10SW back in 2017. It's a 10 inch model ported and uh, I think I paid around 185 for it and the construction is nowhere near like this. Nowhere near. It's good. Like the cabinet's decent. Like it's a decent cabinet. But this is the complete package. Like you get a really decent driver. You get a superb cabinet um, and a good amount of power. 300 watts. <laughs> like I... I don't know how they do it. I don't. I am very impressed with the construction of this cabinet. If you're a speaker DIYer, then you probably already know what a decent subwoofer flat pack kit will cost you. Flat pack kits are speaker cabinets that you have to build and finish yourself. And a decent kit can easily cost well over $100 by itself. And that doesn't include hardware or the cabinet finishing material. By the time you pay for the hardware and finishing material for the cabinet, then you could be well over the cost of a complete JBL 550p subwoofer. I look at this offering from JBL which offers tremendous value for money and think, why would anyone buy a flat pack set to build a 10 inch subwoofer from when they can buy a JBL 550p for a few bucks more and get a subwoofer driver and 300 watt amplifier thrown in for free. Not only does the JBL 550p include a great cabinet to build an excellent 10 inch sealed subwoofer from, but in my opinion, it's the best sounding subwoofer that you can buy for under $200. I can't think of another subwoofer that you can buy for less that sounds better than the 550p. If you know of a better sounding subwoofer for less, then I want to know about it. I'll talk more about how the JBL 550p sounds in my review video, which I should have out next month. My goal with the JBL 550P is to upgrade it and turn it into a great musical subwoofer for my bedroom system. The JBL 550P already punches above its weight in terms of performance, but I want to see if I can turn this into a heavy hitter with as little of an investment as possible. In my opinion, for only $189, I have a great cabinet to start this subwoofer build from. And the included JBL amplifier and driver are just freebies that I can sell to recoup money from. Like I said earlier, this cabinet is very stout and includes a 1 inch front baffle, 3 quarters of an inch thick internal brace, and 3 quarters of an inch side and rear cabinet walls, plus a pretty decent vinyl finish. I will then be using WinISD to help me calculate a good replacement driver for it. If you're interested in following my JBL 550 build process, then make sure you hit that subscribe button as well as the notification bell because I'll be releasing new videos on this build process over the next few months. At $189, the JBL 550P subwoofer offers the biggest bang for the buck that I've ever seen in this hobby. Talk about incredible value for money. It offers good sound quality, great bass for its price point, and extraordinary excursion for such an affordable subwoofer. I would have no problems recommending this subwoofer to friends and family who are just starting out in this hobby. Look for my review video on the JBL 550P in the coming months. This is where I put the 550P through its paces both in sound quality and in SPL. And I don't think you'll be disappointed. So long and happy listening.